So I created this little short for CG Masters with the intention to create a tutorial for how to recreate more or less the whole thing. Uh, so that would include, say, a few overviews, demonstrated practice, perhaps a bit of a time lapse here and there, uh, but pretty detailed, you know, texturing, rendering, materials, and uh, like I say, the whole thing really. But what was I thinking? Uh, once I'd recorded a few parts and then took a look at what I had, I think it probably would have more than likely turned in at about three hours. Uh, rather than a standalone tutorial, it was much more likely to turn into, say, a five or six part series. So, to salvage things and have something to present, I thought instead I'd focus on the essence of what makes the scene. Uh, so the first part, it's going to be basically construction related. Um, so I'll show some useful organic modeling workflows. Uh, the next section would be the workflow involved in making the basic tree trunk. And then the long tree root that snakes through the ground, of course. Uh, plus, we'll take a look at some auto-generation options available to us with the sapling and ivy generator add-ons. Then we can look at the main driving effect of the piece, which is basically how the tree root moves through the ground. And uh, the, that effect has two main elements to it, uh, creating the root reveal effect and uh, using the dynamic paint feature. Uh, and we'll look at those too. So let's get stuck in. So just to demonstrate some simple organic geometry, here are the particle meshes that make up the majority of the scene. Let me use these to introduce a few basic concepts and show how simple this is, or can be. Uh, let's start with a leaf. As you can see, we have these three leaves down here. The topology for each of these is the same and is very simple, and the only thing that differentiates themselves from one another is the unique location of their respective UVs on the texture sheet. Uh, this is a texture, by the way, of some leaves from CG textures. I've moved around some of the leaves on this image uh, ever so slightly, but it's an easy enough image to recreate. Uh, so let's model a leaf with some similar topology. It's a simple enough prop to make and so should be a good enough place to start as any. So just go Shift A and add a mesh plane, then scale it right down with the S key. Then I'm going to press G to grab it, and middle click gesture along the X axis to constrain it, and then just left click to confirm that translation. And now I'm going to tab into edit mode and then truth be told, uh, I'm just going to switch to vertices and then uh, truth be told actually not that concerned with the majority of this geometry here and then press X to delete those three vertices that I've just selected. Uh, really I just want to start with the one vertex and we'll see why in a second. But first I'm going to switch to the top orthographic view by pressing 7 on the numpad. What I've actually got set by the way is I've, if I just press Control alt new to launch into our user preferences under the interface tab I've got this auto perspective um, option checked which is great for me this is exactly how I like to work because whenever I switch from uh, numpad 1 3 or 7 the front top and sides I almost almost always want that to actually be in orthographic mode and then also when I uh, use the middle mouse button to orbit around the scene I will almost always want that to snap to a perspective mode so it just saves me from toggling with the 5 key all the time uh, just to try and do that uh, so it just kind of does it automatically for me so um, hopefully that's not uh, bored you too much and in any case you perhaps have skipped forward by now but anyway let's press on uh, so I have this one vertex selected and uh, I'm just going to disable proportional editing for now and what I'd like to do is actually just draw out the rough shape of a leaf so I'm just going to go control left click and then keep control left clicking around there and that that will kind of do for now and then I'm going to just grab all of it with A and then switch to the edge select mode by going control tab and then selecting the edge and then press E to extrude and then just move that up and then press control M and then it's asking for a mirror axis and I want the Y axis and then left click to select and then that's uh, that's basically about the shape that we want but uh, we will refine this now and um, we're just going to add a bit of extra geometry I'm just going to go control R and then uh, add in a loop down the center here so I'm just going to press uh, left click to confirm that we don't really need to edge slide it so I'm just going to left click again uh, the next thing is I'm actually uh, not happy with the amount of geometry there so I'm actually just going to alt and right click on that edge loop there press ctrl B just to uh, bevel there and then just give ourselves a little bit more maybe the same again there Control B, just bevel that out. Now, something that we can do is uh, there's various ways in which we can smooth, but that's the essence of really what we want to be able to do is actually smooth something. Always have a kind of a smooth fall off uh, with an organic model. So, 
several ways to do that. One is to come to our modifiers and work with the subdivision surface. I'm not going to do that at the moment just to, uh, because we've got a little bit more control this way. The first thing I'm going to do is just refine the overall shape of this. So I'm just going to press A just to toggle the selection of everything and then press Control V to bring up our vertices menu and then a smooth vertex and that's going to basically uh, do exactly what we want. In fact, I'm just going to go Shift R just to duplicate that again, and then uh, maybe move that out slightly at the end there, just to refine the slight shape. So that's something that I want. Uh, something else that we can do is um, I'm actually just going to move that slightly further over there. Is another method of being able to create uh, smooth fall offs is the proportional editing. That's down here. We can enable that now. And now what I can do is I'm just going to highlight those two edges there, press G and then press Z just to constrain it along the Z axis. And then we can just make the leaf slightly concave and then uh, we can tap into object mode. Uh, now the thing is, I actually don't want it all faceted like that I'm actually gonna switch into solid mode just so you can see that a little bit clearer uh, by default most geometry is um, faceted like this it's actually shaded flat uh, is the terminology for it so if I just tap into the um, edit mode and then highlight all the faces and go control F and then shade smooth uh, that should be more like what we want there's actually a third way of being able to create some smooth geometry uh, in addition to the proportional editing and smooth vertex options and that is to use another add-on, which is the Loop Tools add-on, which is absolutely brilliant. So uh, we can just type in Loop into the filter there on the left-hand side, and that should come up fairly quickly. And then just make sure that's enabled. And then what that means is we can tab into this and then go press W to bring up our Specials menu, and then we've got Loop Tools. And then several of these will actually help for organic topology, but um, or at least organic shapes and smooth fall-offs and things. But um, I'm actually just going to draw attention to the relax right now which is uh, completely wrecked that at the moment I'm actually just going to only use the exterior edge loops there and then just press uh, W again and then go loop tools and then relax and then press T to bring up our tool shelf and then we can see we've got this cubic um, iterations one cubic is the, probably the best for these smooth sort of shapes and then we've got iterations one or we could crank that up to more if we wanted but that's kind of similar to the smooth vertex but there's some more tools in there and you'll see that there's a lot more that you can do with that the more you experiment so um, I'm actually just going to grab those scale them down uh, like that and then grab these the tip of this again and then scale it out and then maybe push that in, maybe use the mouse wheel to reduce the influence there. And um, that's not too bad. It's kind of a little bit spoon-like, but um, not too bad for a general kind of a leaf. In any case, uh, what we could do now is just duplicate that across and just create a slight variation. I'm just going to press tab into edit mode grab at the end the just the vertices just at the top here with the B key just border select across those and then from about this angle I'm just going to press R and then rotate in sympathy with the axis that we're looking down the camera plane here and then just use the middle mouse wheel just to scroll and just affect the radius of influence that we want to just have that kind of thing perhaps and that's kind of now generated a kind of a variation on a theme in fact I'm actually just going to sort that out a little bit more as well maybe just sort of come in and refine things a little bit. Those are some of the things that we can do. That's basically really the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, something that we can do is just then create uh, from a leaf like that we can actually just create these small plants uh, that's just rotating them along or uh, constrained around the Z axis in this instance again very very straightforward to create the other thing that I could probably mention is just if we have a look at these stones and mud the reason that I've got uh, three and three is obviously the same topology is one assigned to a mud texture one's assigned to a stone texture just to create these little blobby shapes and that's really simple because we can see it's just a couple of extreme shapes from a general started out from a cube and then that has got a subdivision surface modifier on it just to create those little blobs there uh, so that's those and then finally let's just take a little look at these twigs these couldn't be simpler we just need a six-sided mesh cylinder and the other generation settings are fine for now then further up in the tool shelf I'm just going to select the smooth shading type then I'm going to tab into edit mode to add some extra loops down the cylinder with control R and then scrolling the mouse wheel to increase the number of loops. Then press 1 on the numpad to switch to a front orthographic view. In fact, I'm just going to grab everybody 
with the A key. I'm just going to bring on the manipulator here and then uh, make sure that we're on the scaling and then I'm just going to shift click on this Z arm of the manipulator there just to reduce the radius right down. And then wh while we're in this view, I'm just going to press Z to toggle the wireframe. That way we've got easy access to all the vertices, even the ones around the back that we can't quite see otherwise. And then I'm going, going to press control space just to hide that manipulator. And then just kink this out a little bit. Press B to just grab those. And then press G to just kink this about a little bit more. Maybe I'll kink it from another angle as well. Maybe something like that. And then maybe something like that. And then uh, that's fine. Uh, the only other things that we might like to do is just sort of taper this slightly. So press B and then taper that in. And then maybe fatten the middle slightly or whatever you like to do, maybe shrink it in. Um, and then finally, what we would want to do is just duplicate that off and then shrink that maybe right down and then rotate that into position and just have that as though it's kind of like a branching offshoot and a little bit like that. Um, and then we can do what we like with it really. And then just maybe uh, press control J just to join that into one object. Now it's very simple to unwrap these kinds of things as well because these cylinders, all you have to do is go alt, alt right click on an edge uh, at the top and the bottom and down the, one down the side and then just go control E and then mark a seam and then grab all the faces, press U and then unwrap and then we've got a, a reasonably good unwrapping of a, a twig there. We could just assign a little bit of a bark texture to it or a wood texture and then we have uh, completed the majority of the general uh, workflows that are quite handy for maintaining nice smooth topology and uh, fairly organic looking shapes. So next up, we'll take a look at using some of this to create the tree. So as you can see, I've split the 3D view slightly and added these extra two image editor windows, each with a reference image that we might find handy at this early stage in the modeling process. Also, the 3D cursor appears to be in about the right place, so we uh, are ready to start. So let's go Shift A and then add a mesh cylinder. Uh, this cylinder has got 32 sides to it and uh, it's about half a blender unit's radius, which looks to be about right. The depth looks to be about right. And then there's no faces on the top and bottom, which is exactly what we need. Also, we can set this to shading smooth just to get rid of that faceted edge there, just to make it look a bit more organic. And then press G and then Z, and then we can uh, just sit it just so the bottom of this is actually just resting on the bottom plane there. And then also if I just press Z7 to jump into our top orthographic mode, we can press G and then sort of move this a bit closer to the back wall something a bit like that. So now at this point, I'm just going to taper the top as we can see on this tree reference image here. It kind of gets a little bit narrower towards the top there. So let's just do that. I'm just going to tab into edit mode, go control tab, select the edges, go alt right click to grab that top edge loop and then press S to scale. And then I'm just going to move the mouse into something a bit like that. Next up is to create some geometry down the side of the trunk here. So I'm going to go control R and then scroll the middle mouse wheel and then add all these extra rings in. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to select the bottom edge loop now. And as you can see, we get this flaring, this kind of trumpet sort of a shape to the bottom here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to switch to uh, enable the proportional editing and then switch to a sharp fall off, which should give us what we need. So if I just go S to scale that now and then just play with the circle of influence a little bit, just scale that right up and then just see what we get. Maybe something a little bit like that should do us. And then what we can do is I'm going to switch to smooth fall off and then alt right click on that edge loop and then just push that sort of down a little bit more maybe. Maybe something a little bit like that and then just move it up again slightly. So uh, we've got something that seems to be about right there. It's just sort of a basic shape to begin with just to start on these roots and so on now. So if I tab into edit mode and then switch with the control and tab shortcut key to face select mode, we can grab these uh, three, uh, six faces and then press E to extrude out, which is fine. And then grab, say, maybe those, no, 
Let's grab those four and then press E to extrude out a little bit further this time. And then the same with these four, just extrude out a little bit further. And then let's grab uh, maybe those eight faces. Let's just deselect that one and then press E to extrude out, maybe not quite as far again. So also while I have those faces selected, I'm just gonna highlight all these again grab those and then grab those. And then what I'd like to do is just drop them down because it's tapered and flared at the bottom. We're kind of going up out of the, at the normal angle. You can see that we're kind of raising everything up quite a lot there. So let's just press G and then Z and then just drop that down a little bit. Just drop the radius of influence as well. Maybe to something about like that. Yeah, maybe something like that. I was just trying to have these edges here just higher than the edges of the exposed bits there. That's all I was aiming for there, really. Uh, at this point, we can delete some of the additional faces that we had created during the extrude at the bottom. We can just delete those. Let's press X and then delete faces. And then also just add some extra geometry to these further out extruded areas. And then at this stage, I just like to press uh, the Z key and then highlight all this geometry on the side here, about like that. And then go control and then uh, control tab and then switch to vertices. And then I'm just going to go control V and then smooth the vertex like that. All those vertices get smoothed. So if I just switch with the Z key back to our solid shading mode, uh, that's looking a lot better, but it's still not looking great. So let's just repeat that command a few times with shift R and we can see we're getting something a little bit more natural looking now. In fact, what some of the things that we can do is maybe just grab a couple of those and then from the top view, I'm just going to move them in, uh, maybe with a higher influence though, maybe something a bit like that. And then same here, maybe move those in. And then uh, we can sort of play with the sort of uniformity a little bit and then um, sort of tighten some things in. And then at this stage, really, what we can do is we can grab extra faces, extrude them out, and then sort of do the same kind of idea. Also, you'll notice as I actually scaled in there, I'm actually affecting these area of the, this area of the tree, which I don't really want to do. That's what the uh, connected option under proportional editing is going to allow us to do. So it's not going to affect any faces within the circle of influence if they aren't already connected to the face that we happen to have selected. Uh, so that's pretty handy for what we were just doing there. So I'm just going to select that, keep that on. So also I want to delete those bottom faces as well. And then finally, just make sure that we sort of drop that down a little bit more, scale that in a little again. And then what I'd like to do actually is just do the same thing as we did before, which is just toggle the wireframe, just grab the vertices in wireframe mode, just so that it's easy to make sure that we do select everything. And then control V, just bring up our vertices menu, and then uh, we can smooth the vertex and then just repeat that a couple of times again. Now, something we can do just to smooth things off at the very, very bottom is just grab that edge loop there and then go S to scale and then Z to constrain the scale to that axis and then press zero to essentially have them all take the same position and flatten them out along the axis uh, so that they can intersect with the ground plane a little neater. Let's see what we're getting there. So that's about right. Uh, in fact, I'm actually just gonna drop it almost totally low and then press G and then Z and then drop that a bit further. And then that looks okay. And then I'm going to drop the whole thing a little bit. And then actually one last thing, I'm just going to go into this, grab all this geometry. Just grab all about that geometry like that. That's fine. And then press S and then scale along the Z a little bit more, just sort of squash it down a bit more. And then that is about where I'd like to leave it at this stage. Uh, we could go in and then refine all this because obviously this is looking a little bit clumpy here. Uh, maybe that could be brought down a bit more. Um, but really, for the most part, I think that's kind of going to work for our purposes. And uh, we'll get on to the texturing and UVing and basically finishing it off. In order to avoid lots of stretching in the texture, uh, once we come to paint it, we're going to need to have some pretty decent UV seams. Uh, the edges of the islands need to be sort of thought out. 
So what I'd like to do is just indicate in edge mode to Blender exactly where we think the best seams should be. Uh, incidentally, we don't need any at the back because I've removed those back faces now. So that's sort of like an automatic seam for us. But all this area that we've extruded down here is definitely going to be a problem. So we're going to need to sort of draw some borders and uh, edge seams around these areas. So the way I like to do this is just going around selecting edge loops really that I think is probably going to work best. So actually I'm going to deselect, uh, oops, I'm going to, uh, let's, yeah, let's start again there. Okay. So let's just grab that and that, and then maintain these central faces here, all part of the main tree trunk. Uh, we're going to cut this bit out. So let's just think about the main tree trunk here for a second and how that would stretch. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to hit in shift and alt and right clicking on all these. So that's kind of okay. That's going to have a little bit of stretching, but it's not going to be that bad. Um, particularly seeing how the stretching bits is not going to be seen that much on this model, but just for completeness, I think I am actually going to just cut those two bits out similar to as we did on the other side. Um, and that should help there. Now the main tree trunk, that seems like it should be fine now. Uh, we just got to think about these areas down here. Perhaps making seams here is the best way to go about it. Something to bear in mind while UV unwrapping is that there isn't a perfect solution as such, but the aim really is to reduce texture stretching by imagining almost wrapping it like a present without having to crumple any paper. So wherever the paper would begin to crumple, perhaps there is a good place to cut the paper with some scissors or cut it out. Uh, cut the paper out as a separate piece entirely, or UV seams and islands as we would term it. Uh, so if you can't imagine being able to cover it neatly with a piece of paper that was cut into these shapes that we're outlining, uh, then perhaps we need some more or maybe different cuts. And another consideration is that we don't want to make too many cuts as that might make things difficult to manage if we were intending at least to make any tweaks to the image in a uh, 2D image editor, for example. And then really we're balancing all those considerations with the desire to not waste too much space on the texture map. So any unwieldy shapes that we can't keep all the same or appropriate scale in the UV editor may require some alteration. Then all I need to do is go control E and then mark seam. And then all the way everywhere we had our edges there are now going to be UV seams. So hopefully that's going to be fine. Let's just pull this out and then unpin these. And then uh, I'm just going to go image, new image, and then an untitled image is fine. 1024 is fine. All that's fine. And then let's just collapse that. And then I'm just going to highlight all the faces and then go U and then unwrap. And then we have our unwrap now. Now we could go in and start sort of polishing this up a little bit better, sort of filling the space a little bit better, which is definitely something we could do. But um, just for simplicity, I'm just going to just carry on at this point. So let's just move to our untitled image there as well as drop that in the back of our UVs. And uh, that's it. We're basically ready to get painting. Okay, so now we're ready to paint onto our tree now. And uh, there's just a few things that we need to change in the setup. First of all, I'll just mention that we're in Blender Render, uh, just so that we've got access to be able to switch to our textured mode here. And also so that we can switch to GLSL shading. That's uh, a couple of important things that we can do there. This untitled texture that we created, I've now saved that into a file location so as to be able to plug it into a texture slot in a new material. Uh, so that means this new material has been uh, created. And then if we go over to the texture portion of that, uh, we can see that we've created a new image texture here and then that uh, untitled image is now plugged into that. But also in object mode, I've uh, parented a load of basic lamps. I've just created four lamps at the top there. If I just look on the top view, we can see that uh, basically we've just created four lamps and then just copied them and then dropped them below the object as well, just to give a full all around illumination while we're in this textured mode, because textured mode obviously sort of incorporates the lighting behavior. Of course, we have to be in texture paint mode and then we should be able to just start painting on the mesh and we should be able to see update in uh, our image editor behind our UVs there. And also we can see it operating 
and behaving as it should do. Also, we can see that I've actually just dropped in a simple bark texture there just to be able to paint on, just do some tests. Um, so everything's working as it should there, but I just wanted to point out a potential problem that we've got with this, which is if we just press F just to scale out the brush here slightly and we start to paint, we can see that that bark texture is absolutely massive. And then as soon as we go kind of in a little bit closer, we can see it's quite small in comparison to the original just brush stroke that we just did. Now, the best thing that we've got to be able to get around this is to use another add-on, which is the B projection add-on, which I'm just gonna to come to now. So if we just type in our filters, B proj should do it. And then I believe it's under the testing uh, supported level. So there it is, B projection. So if we just make sure that that's enabled there and then press the N key, and then we should see it at the bottom of our, um, I'll just close the layer management for a minute. We should see it at the bottom of our uh, properties panel there. And then we can see the add B projection plane is ready to go. So we're just gonna click on that. And then that essentially just drops a plane into the 3D view. And it, whenever we zoom in and out of the scene, it'll basically keep that plane at exactly the same size really in reference and relation to the actual prop. So that is going to allow us to rectify that problem that we've just experienced. Um, so basically, if we actually just come down here to this projection plane now, and then what we want to do is we want to open up one of those images. So let's just go to this tree two image. This is probably the image that we'll end up using. So if I just click apply image there, just to make sure that's on there. And we can now use these sliders to just alter the size and the uh, position of it. So let's scale that up as well. So let's say that's a fairly good representation of the tree that we've got as well. Um, I'm just gonna scale down the brush with the F key. And now I'm just gonna switch from draw to the clone brush. And now what we should be able to do is, uh, oh, also notice that um, we're actually in a kind of a, um, a, a, a trackball rotation now. We've been switched from the turntable rotation method in the view. Uh, to a kind of a, 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 a trackball rotation method, which can be a little bit tricky if you're not quite used to that. Um, but that's just something to bear in mind. Uh, a lot of Blender users actually do are quite familiar and comfortable with that, so uh, it shouldn't probably make much difference. Anyway, um, I, all, all we'd need to do is just control and left click on a point on this uh, projection plane. And then at that point, we can just start to paint onto the mesh. Uh, and we can see it transferring there. I just want to make sure that we're on a full strength though as well. And we can see that that just properly uh, puts its uh, paint onto the trunk there. And as you can see, as we zoom in, it now kind of uh, maintains a certain ratio between the scale of this and the scale of this. So it helps, if I just press shift space, we've just got a little bit more um, uh, real estate on the screen just to sort of make things a little bit more sensible. And then if we actually just go around and just start painting, um, that's all we need to do really. Now, basically the downside of painting this texture solely in a 2D application would have been all of the seams at the base of the object. Something that would have been particularly problematic in this instance because we know that the camera and the animation was probably gonna get a good look at that area. Thankfully, because we're able to project paint textures in 3D, in this case, uh, we can eliminate all those seams very easily. As we'll be able to see in the texture sheet, it automatically transfers the paint to the correct UV island location and orientation on the texture map. Uh, one thing that I did actually forget to mention is when we plug that texture in, don't forget that it's going to be set to generated mapping coordinates initially. We'll need to switch that to UV mapping. Uh, so that's just something else to just bear in mind there. So uh, one last thing that we can do is once we've got this texture on and we're kind of happy with the majority of how we've painted it, and uh, rather than sort of laboriously sort of painting through because my uh, screen is unfortunately very, very slow at the moment, especially with the screen recording software. I'm sure you've kind of picked up the principles of um, how this basically works. If we want to now switch to a different image, like maybe this one here, we can then just switch that there and then apply image and it just sort of corrects its ratio there. And now we can change the scale down 
If you want to alter, mess around with the uh, some of these settings, uh, they're very, very straightforward. We can change the UV scale so that this image can be tiled, for example, and uh, some other settings. It's all very, very straightforward, I found. Uh, but we can sort of, rather than just necessarily painting straight on the view like that, what we can do is we can actually change this to different options in here and darken might be a kind of a useful thing to just add a little bit of an extra sort of detail and texture um, into it. So as you can see there, that like kind of uh, might be quite a nice sort of feature to add into it just to get a little bit of variety, uh, but also sort of respect kind of many of the color choices that has been uh, already determined by the use of that first texture. Um, of course, you might want to put that in a paint program and sort of tweak around with it, maybe change the contrast, the levels, that kind of thing. But yeah, that's basically where I'm going to leave it, uh, unfortunately. Uh, obviously, that looks like a bit of a mess, but I just want to kind of carry on showing what the main details are of the whole scene. In order to be able to create the tree root, which ends up snaking along the ground, uh, all we need to do is, it's actually quite simple, we can just jump into our top orthographic view and then go Shift A, add a curve, a Bezier curve, and then press G to move that out of the way. I'm just going to press R to rotate it slightly, just to make sure that one of the sides of it is uh, poking out from within the tree, and then tab into edit mode, and then I'm going to press a to make sure that all the control points are selected and then press V to change the handle type and then I'm going to switch this to automatic and then I'm just going to come into perspective mode just maybe lift that up slightly and now go back into top view and then go tab back into the edit mode now I'm just going to grab that point and then just move it with the G key uh, say somewhere around there and then similarly to other methods we can just go control and left click and then just sort of uh, paint out its direction if you like um, and that's pretty much it and then we'll just refine its position in just a moment well obviously it's just a curve at the right now it's not really exactly much of a mesh so all we need to do is just come to our curve settings and then just fill this in uh, as a full uh, and then give it some bevel depth and then that should basically uh, create our tree root for us. Um, it's a little bit blocky at the moment so we're just going to crank up the resolution just so it's nice and smooth and then at that point um, it's just a matter of say maybe dropping it so it's about halfway in the middle of the ground there and then around here if I tab back into the edit mode and um, we can just sort of start to move this into where it needs to be and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to change the size with the Alt S uh, shortcut key which is the shrink fatten tool now we can just build that right up there uh, so that starts to sit in there a little bit better um, maybe scale that up and move it down slightly and then have that sort of sink into the ground a bit better and then that's about it we could then sort of add some variation and noise to the sort of um, size as it goes and maybe taper it in at the end with shift uh, with alt s again the other thing is that if we want to be able to give this some particular and very custom uvs the best way to do that is just to uh, at least in my opinion is to uh, take this and then go alt c and then convert to mesh from curve and now we have if we tab into edit mode we can see we've just got our a basic mesh essentially so now what we can do is we can go into our edit mode and uh, go control tab and then mesh select on an edge uh, maybe this edge here go control e and then mark seam and then uh, if we just drag out a uv image editor switch out over to there and then highlight everybody go u and then go unwrap we can see we get this there's a couple of methods we've got conformal and we've got angle based and uh, angle based might be the uh, better method to go at that point and then we'll just sort of have that uh, probably scaled up quite high like that with a basically a, some kind of uh, bark texture or wood texture in the background and um, that should uh, work just fine so let's take a look at the uh, the next section Next thing I'd like to do is take a look at some of the auto generation methods uh, we have if we check out our add-ons um, in our user preferences we can see that we have an IV generator I'm just going to actually just type in IV into, IV into the filter there and then just enable that add-on and then we've also got uh, the trees which are called the sapling so I'm just going to enable that there as well and now um, we just need to make sure our 
3D cursor is in the center of the world because uh, if we're going to be using armatures on the trees to sort of animate them swaying in the wind, we're going to need this at the origin. So we're just at the 000, zero point. If you just want to make sure that it is there, we can just look in our properties sidebar and we can see the 3D cursor section is there and it is at um, zero. Uh, to quickly um, take, put it there, we can just use the Shift C shortcut as well, and that will zero out all those values for us. But anyway, if we go Shift A and then add our tree first, we can see that what we get is a very, very large tree in this particular scene. What we're going to want to do is just change all these settings down here. Incidentally, I've, we'll just create one tree just to sort of show this basic setup really. Simply, we're on geometry right now, but we've got all these other settings that we can change. Now we'll want to bevel them, similar to we, as we did with the tree root when we created that curve before, and then just change the resolution. And then let's change the shape slightly to maybe hemispherical. And then I'm going to scale that down to fit the scene a little bit better, like about five. And then all the other settings are pretty much good. Apart from the radius scale, the tree trunk's a little bit thin. I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker by setting that to two. And now I'm going to move over to the branch splitting. Now at the moment we've got two levels, that means we've got this main trunk and then we've got this second level, which is all these other branches coming off of them. And what I'd like to do is just change that to three. Let's just get a third level off there, which is looking much more plush to me now. And if we just come down here, this is the branches, the amount of branches that we've got at each level. So a zero is basically just this single trunk that we've got down here. 50 is this sort of second set. So let's turn that down to like 30. And then uh, the 30 that we've now got on that second, the third level, should I say, I want to take that down to say maybe about 10. Um, and that kind of looks good enough for me. Uh, we can also sort of change some of the angles here just to uh, play it with those a little bit, but that's all fine for me. Now branch growth and pruning, I tend to just leave it as defaults and I'm just gonna do that now as well. But we've also got leaves uh, naturally, what tree would be complete without them. So we've got uh, show leaves, which we can click there and then we have obviously got a visualization of our leaves and we've also got the leaf shape as well. I'm gonna switch this to rectangular. That's gonna make things a little bit easier if we wanted to grab all those leaves and be able to just stick a leaf alpha texture on them. Uh, it's kind of a little bit easier to do that with the rectangular option there. And then obviously there's the amount of leaves. I'm just gonna leave that to the default. We've also got the distribution. I'm gonna switch that to hemispherical again. And then the leaf scale is 0 0.17. We've also got it on the X as well, but I'm just gonna turn that down to about 0 0.1. And then uh, we can see, there we go. And uh, I'm just gonna leave all the other settings as defaults. Now, finally, we've got our armature, use armature and armature animation. As you can see there, we can just switch that down, but I'm actually gonna turn that down slightly to just one. Uh, the wind speed just lower that down and then if I just press alt a just to animate we can see we basically get that kind of swaying in the wind now obviously you don't have to be too observant to see the actual tree isn't moving uh, what we're going to need to do is come over to the modifiers and we'll see here we've got bone envelopes now we'll just need to check that on and then now it will start to animate along with it. But you'll notice that the downside is that the frames per second in the viewport is now just dramatically dropped. Uh, so which is why it's possibly off by default. So if you just remember to place that on at render time, uh, everything should be good to go. So that's a typical tree that we could add to the scene. So the next thing that we can auto generate is the IV. We can have that grow over an object that we have selected. I've got this wall selected at the moment and the 3D cursor is gonna be the position where the IV more or less starts from. And so all we'd need to do is go Shift A and then add a curve and then add IV to mesh. And then we can see it's actually preserved the settings that I've been playing around with a little bit earlier on, uh, which is very, very basic things that I've changed. Uh, initially, it's just set to one maximum IV length, just one blender unit. So I've just wanted that to be a lot larger. So I've tweaked that and changed that to 2.5. So it sort of spreads much further over the wall. 
uh, the ivy size, I think I've increased that slightly. And then uh, the other important setting really that I wanted to just go over is these leaf settings down here. Uh, this is gonna dictate the size of the leaves and essentially how many leaves there are. If you do happen to uh, click and do things and then obviously lose the settings in the bottom of the tool shelf there, there is a little bit of something that you could do regarding the uh, amount on size of these leaves. And uh, something that we could do about that is just tab into edit mode and then make sure all the faces are selected. We can make sure that we're also on individual origins and then press S to scale. And then we can actually just scale them up or down as to whatever we might want. Incidentally, this is similar to the tree in that these are all sort of rectangular planes. So we can just assign a IV alpha texture to it and it should show up fine. But otherwise we can actually just rechange the size of these leaves on the fly. But the, as regarding the amount of leaves, that's a little bit trickier. We can reduce the amount of leaves if we like fairly simply uh, by just going to select and then random. And then what that's happened there, if we look in the tool shelf again, we've selected 50% of the mesh. So if we wanted to go more like 90% of the mesh, we could almost get rid of all of it and then just go faces. And then we can see we've left with that many leaves. But that's just the basics of the IV generator and the basic, very, very basics of the tree, the sapling add-on as well. Uh, so those are just some of the auto generation methods that we can employ within Blender. So let's take a look at some effects now in the scene and in particular this tree root that essentially emerges and snakes itself across the ground. At the moment we can see that it's in its final position uh, but let's see how we're going to be able to sort of push it down and have it sort of reveal across the surface. Uh, to do this it's kind of going to be really simple actually we're just going to use the lattice so we just go shift A and then add a lattice and then I'm just going to press 7 to jump into top orthographic view and then press G to just move this a little bit further closer into the scene. I'm just going to scale that on the Y axis, S and then Y. And then basically I'm just looking to incorporate within the bounds of this lattice, the very, very top of the root and the very, very uh, bottom of the root there. Uh, what we can do now is come over to the object data panel uh, within the properties uh, window and then crank up the U direction. Just give that an extra segment down in the middle there. And then uh, let's just drop that down a little bit further there as well. And then all we need to do is tab into edit mode and then grab those furthest to the right vertices of points of the lattice and then drag them down. And then all we need to do is, uh, in fact, I'm just going to push that a little bit further down on the, in the Z axis. And now uh, with this tree root selected, we can go over to our modifiers and then add a lattice. And then under the objects, we want to add the lattice. And then we can see it's now disappeared. What's actually gonna happen, of course, is as we insert a keyframe, a location keyframe and then move a bit further on down the scene and then reveal and push it that way like that. We can then add another keyframe in in, uh, with the I key and then just select location. And then basically we can now just play the animation, Alt A, and then we can see it essentially snakes itself and emerges from beneath the ground. Finally, I'd just like to go over some of the dynamic paint settings. This is the effect where it appears the root is slightly pushing the earth of the ground up as it emerges. Dynamic paint's really simple and effective and intuitive uh, to use, and it's just, just a great feature all around, really. So let's just take a look. Uh, first, I'd just like to show you how I've prepared the ground plane, though. If I just tab into edit mode, I've subdivided it quite a bit and then subdivided it even further along the path the route will take. This is just by highlighting faces and then selecting W and then choosing subdivide from the menu. Uh, so let's now add our dynamic paint. The ground plane is going to be the canvas and the root is going to be the brush. So let's just add, set that up now. So let's highlight the ground plane, click on dynamic paint and then add canvas and then highlight the root and then click dynamic paint and then switch that to brush and then add brush. Uh, let's switch back to the ground plane again, the canvas, and then take a look at the settings here. Uh, we want to displace the vertices, so this is correct up here, but this is wrong down here. We want to switch from paint to displace. And then um, the, the frames, we want to make sure it obviously encapsulates what the animation is, and at the moment that is true. And uh, otherwise, we've got our cache down here, which we're going to need to bake once we're happy with the settings. But let's just run the animation and see what happens. So let's just go Alt-A, 
and then we can see we're basically getting something happening there so we definitely know it's working it's unfortunately sort of pushing down on it though which is not what we wanted it's, we wanted it to sort of emerge uh, from beneath so pushing the earth up uh, so all we need to actually do for this is just come back to the canvas and then uh, switch this displace factor to minus about 0 0.4 and then you can see it's actually taken effect already and uh, we can see if I actually just tab to delete the cache there and then go alt a and then just run that again we can see we get essentially the effect working in the viewport there so that's just basically uh, how to set it up as i say we'd need to then bake and then also just play around with some of the settings we could potentially grab this route and then maybe change some of these settings down here uh, but otherwise that's basically all there is to the effect and um, i think it really worked uh, quite nicely considering how straightforward it is to and how powerful this uh, feature is just considering how simple it is to use. That should really conclude these overviews of some of the ideas that went into this little short and uh, there's lots of rooms for improvements though you know things like floating particles maybe some buoyed particles for insects maybe some smoke simulation for flying dust and things especially when the rock collides uh, but as it stands I hope you enjoyed it and uh, found some of what you saw here useful so thanks for watching.